again, the moon is the big deal. The moon is close to us. It is uh, the thing that really pulls on the earth. The sun does too, don't get me wrong, but it is the moon, which is the driving force of the tides. Uh, and you can even get tides in the lake. The Great Lakes, they've got tides because the moon, it's a large enough body of water that the moon can uh, work on it. Uh, a cool thing to think about, a tide is a wave. It's a great big wave where high tide would be the crest of the wave, low tide would be the trough of the wave. Um, that's pretty cool, I like that. The tidal range is the distance from, got blocked. Sorry, I've got stuff in front of stuff. It's driving me nuts. All right, uh, high tide, the difference between high tide and low tide. This difference here is my tidal range. You're going to need to know that for the lab that we're doing today. So the high tide range, I mean, the tidal range is the difference between high tide and low tide, OK? Our tidal bulges, this is the pull of water towards the moon or towards the sun, because there's a tidal, there's a solar tidal budge, uh, bulge, and a, let me get my live transcript on, um, a solar bulge and a lunar bulge. And sometimes they work together uh, to work to pull the water in the same direction, and sometimes they work against each other. So uh, if you're looking at this, the sun is enormous, but it is seriously, seriously far away. So uh, the moon, even though it's tiny compared to the sun, exerts a lot more tidal force on us than the, than the sun does. Um, the moon pulls on it, and you may wonder why we have a high tide here, but we also have a high tide there. Well, it's the it's kind of a centrifugal force. It's inertia. Since this water is being bulged out, it's also slinging around to the backside of the Earth. So if you look here, we've got a centrifugal force on the backside. So we have a bulge of water here, and we end up with a bulge of water there. It's inertia. Um, so we have tides every single day. Every day we have tides, every day. But sometimes these tides within a month change drastically. So every day you're gonna have high tide, every day you're gonna have at least a low tide. Um, but sometimes you'll have the sun and the moon working together and you get what's called a spring tide. And it's not, it's not, nothing to do with this with the season nothing to do with the season uh so you've got the spring tide and it just means that both the solar tide and the lunar tide are together um here we've got what's called a neap tide and you have the solar tide pulling one way and the lunar tide pulling another way and it flattens out those tides the tides are not gonna be nearly as big. You're gonna be kind of flat. Your high tide's not gonna be very high. Your low tide's not gonna be very low. So here's kind of a summary. Oops. Uh, for spring tides, spring tides here, you can see the earth, sun, and moon are all in a direct line. Everything's working together to pull uh, extremely high tides out of that. And because the high tides are so high, that's where all your water is. Your low tides are extremely low. And then you have what's called a neap tide. Neap tides are where the sun and the moon are kind of working against each other. The sun is moving the water this way. The moon is trying to move the water that way. So your high tides, not very high, and your low tides, not very low. So check this out. This is one month. Spring tide, neap tide, spring tide, neap tide. As you have a new moon, a quarter moon, a full moon, and the last quarter moon. Okay, so two spring tides, two neap tides every single month. Uh, 
You can also have changes daily in between tides. Port Aransas is interesting because it has diurnal tides some of the days. So you have one low tide and you have one high tide in a 24 hour period. And that's what you see here. This is the 24 hours and you can see the high to the low to the high. So that's one low and one high per 24 hours, diurnal. Then you have in Port Aransas, you also have semi-diurnal. It's like days that are semi-diurnal. And that means that you have two lows and two highs that are about the same height and depth, right? That are about the same. So your high tides are about the same, your low tides are about the same. But you've got two of each in a 24 hour period. And then you have a mixture. Uh, in Port Aransas, this happens when it's changing from a diurnal tide to a semi-diurnal tide where you have two lows, two highs, but they're different heights. All right, this is a tide chart. And part of the thing, uh, one of the things that you're going to have to do, let me go to show you this one. Let me do a preview. This preview, you are going to label this this uh, title chart. So for a one date, you're gonna do a green circle around one date that shows a spring tide. So you have to look here and figure out which one date, because there's several, don't get me wrong. There's several, uh, one date that would show a spring tide and then you're gonna put a green circle around it, okay? Then you're gonna find one date that shows a neap tide and you're gonna put a circle around that date. One diurnal, orange circle around the diurnal, yellow circle around the semi-diurnal and a red circle around the mixed semi-diurnal, okay? Um, so for your lab, that pretty much does it. I'll show you this because this is part of your lab also. Now, when you have the sun, you have the moon here. Uh, this shows you where the moon is, right? So the moon's here and the earth is rotating. It shows you where the moon is. So we do not use the solar uh, day. We use a lunar day. So a lunar day, you've got high tide to high tide, which is 12 hours and 25 minutes because a lunar day is 24 hours and 50 minutes, not the 24 hours of a solar day, but 24 hours and 50 minutes uh, is the lunar day, okay? So if you look here, uh, high tide to high tide, 12 hours, here we go, 12 hours and 25 minutes apart, high tide to high tide. And then if you want to look at low tide to high tide, it's half of that, 6.12 or six hours and 12.5 minutes, right? So here, high tide, it'll count down the hours until low tide, boom like that. All right, where am I? One of the things that you're going to have to do is watch a video and you, I'm gonna put you in breakout rooms for this. You are going to figure out from this video, uh, the new moon, the lowest of the low tides and the highest of the high tides. So here's the video. If you look here, this says new moon, and you can see where the moon is. And you're just going to run the video. And when you get to the first tide, the first low tide, you can look here. It's not gonna show up here. It's negative 0.4. So if I were you, I would totally write that down on something because you're going to want to do the, the highest 
of the high tide, so between these two, which is the highest, and the lowest of the low tide, so between these two, which is the lowest. And you're going to do it for new moon. Uh, you're going to do it for first quarter. You see the FQ there. Uh, you're going to do it for uh, full moon. You can see the full moon there. And then you're going to do it for last quarter. The highest of the high tides and the lowest of the low tides. All right. Any questions? All right, I'm going to put you into breakout rooms after. Hang on, give me a second. I'm going to do my five days of camera.